GCP is an app management. Today we will see how we can create, restore, and delete the snapshot in GCP. My name is Rohit Garg, and I welcome you on our YouTube channel Decode ITES. Decode ITES provides you single learning platform for multiple IT technologies. Snapshot in GCP. GCP provided you the option of taking a snapshot backups to reduce the risk of unexpected data loss. As per the best practices, you should configure a regular snapshot to ensure data is backed up on regular schedule. You can create the snapshot on same device as override or you can create separate machine or disk using the snapshot. You can perform a snapshot function using Google Cloud Web Console or G Cloud command line utility. You cannot change the storage location of existing snapshot, although the snapshots are global resources, that means all resources in the project can access the snapshot. Also, you can share the snapshot across the project as well. You can snapshot your disk at most once every 10 minutes. If this is the limit, you cannot schedule your snapshot in less than 10 minutes interval. The snapshot is cost-friendly backup approach. By default, the snapshots are incremental and automatically compressed to avoid additional billing for redundant data and ensure the least usage of storage space. As per best practices and to maintain the reliability of snapshot history, a snapshot might occasionally capture the full image of your disk or you can plan it accordingly. The snapshot does not require any downtime. You can create a snapshot from this even when while they are attached and running to instance. Snapshot availability and a tribal network cost are dependent on location. The snapshot location can be multi-region like US or Asia or regional storage. You can specify the location at a time of snapshot creation as default location will be geographically close to the location of machine or disk will be assigned. That means in case your VM instance is a part of US region or Asia region, Compute Engine will automatically align US multi-region or Asia multi-region as a snapshot location. For example, if your persistent disk is stored in US Central 1, your snapshot is restored in US multi-region by default. The snapshot network cost completely depends on the snapshot location. You can wisely choose the location to save the network cost. For example, if your source disk or instance is in Asia East 1, you can store your snapshot in Asia East 1 region or Asia multi-region. You would not occur a network cost when you access your snapshot from these locations. Whereas, if your source disk is in Asia East 1, and you store your snapshot in Asia East 2 for some other reason, then it will anchor our network cost when you access your snapshot between two regions. Individual planning or scheduling the snapshot need to take care of these things so that he can optimally use so that you can use your budget wisely and reduce the cost by efficient or smart planning. The snapshot creation process. By default, snapshots are incremental to avoid additional billing for redundant data and ensure least usage of storage space. Let's consider an example and see how snapshot works. Snapshot 1, this is the first snapshot of any disk and it will be the full one. Full snapshot contains all data and work as a baseline for next incremental backups. Snapshot 2, the next snapshot after full will be an incremental one. Only changes made after the last snapshot will be backed up. It also saves a reference to unchanged data from the last full snapshot. That means it's a purely incremental one so that no redundant data or duplicate data is backed up. Snapshot 3. All further snapshots after snapshot 2 contains any new or changed data since snapshot 2 but won't contain any unchanged data from snapshot 1 or 2. Instead of this, snapshot 3 contains references to block in snapshot 1 and 2 for unchanged data. And this chain continues. In snapshot 4, 
it will check for the things which are not changed after snapshot 3 and take the backup only change data and creates a pointer with one, two, three snapshot. So this is a chain that GCP computing and snapshot functionality maintains to ensure data recovery and to use the disk in an optimal manner to reduce the cost or efficient usage of your budget. We also have image from Google documentation which also is the same. We have a persistent disk A and in first we have taken the full snapshot and now in snapshot 2 it will contains only the change data and rest of the things it automatically mapped from snapshot 1 and in snapshot 3 it's copying the data that was changed after snapshot 2 and creating a pointer for unchanged data with snapshot 2 and 3. The snapshot deletion process. We had reviewed the snapshot process and see how incremental snapshot depends on last incremental or full snapshot. Now when you want to delete the snapshot my concern is delete allowed for snapshot having dependent snapshot and if yes how snapshot chain will be maintained. GCP snapshots are very smart and they have an internal mechanism to maintain it. When you delete a snapshot the compute engine check if a snapshot has any dependent snapshot or not. In case of no dependent snapshot compute engine delete it immediately. However if a snapshot does have dependent snapshot then any data that is required for restoring other snapshots are moved into next snapshot and increase the size of that particular snapshot. If we consider the above example where we have taken a snapshot 1, 2, 3 and in 3 we have a reference pointers of snapshot 2, 1 and 2 along with the changes made after snapshot 2. In case we delete the snapshot 2 then snapshot 3 need to relink all the data from snapshot 1 and need to copy all updated changes or changes after snapshot 1 which was previously a part of snapshot 2 and this will result increase in size of snapshot 3. Any data that is not required for testing, any data which is not required for restoring other snapshots are deleted. This lowers the total size of your snapshots. The next snapshot no longer reference the snapshot mark for deletion Considering the fact that this snapshot is a part of chain and have the dependent snapshot. But GCP copies all data from this snapshot to the next snapshot and relink the pointers for unchanged data. Let's start with the demo session over GCP snapshot management. Welcome to the demo session. In this session, we will explore how to schedule a snapshot, how to take add of snapshots and how to restore them back. For this, you just need to log in your Google Cloud Platform page and you need to go to Compute Engine and in Compute Engine, you need to go to VM Instances. For VM Instances, why I ask you to come to VM Instances? Just to ensure for which VM you want to take backup. We will use Lohi the Demo VM for this snapshot practice. Now we will go to a snapshot option in left side pane. In this you will find option a snapshot and schedule a snapshot. For first activity we will take the ad hoc snapshot. So we will create snapshot, a snapshot one. So we will give a name Rohit demo vm snap. Now these are disk 1, disk 2, disk 3 and disk 5 and Rohit demo VM. In first activity, we are going to take the snapshot of complete instance Rohit demo VM. So we just select the machine, region it automatically picked, multi-region and we will create. You will see this option that your free trial credit will be used for this snapshot. So that's we have. So we will create it. Creating a snapshot of Rohit demo VM, the snapshot was created. In the same way, you can create the snap of or take the snapshot of disk data attached to VMs. So once it's completed, we will take the snapshot of particular disk instead of instance. In instance snapshot, please ensure it just snapshot the boot drive. Other attached disk with this instance is not snapped. So in meanwhile, it's completing. We will click on create a snapshot 
and we will name is Rohit VM demo disk 3 and we have disk 3 here this disk is currently attached to Rohit demo VM again multi region and you can just click on create and snapshot creation is in progress and now you can see VM snapshot is created Now let's take one more snapshot of VM instance and ensure whether it's going to take a full snapshot or incremental one. So create a snapshot, name Rohit demo VM snap2. snapshot is currently generating and you will see it's somewhere around 0 byte or very less bytes because this will be the incremental snapshot we have just studied in the PT session that the GCP snapshot works on an incremental method once they have a full snapshot as a baseline further snapshot will be incremental one so you can see snap 2 of Rohit demo VM is of 0 byte now you will ask why this free snapshot of 0 byte because this disk is completely blank we have not uh, saved any data in this that's why it's not taking any snapshot size so this is the way how you can create the snapshot ad hoc snapshots of your disk or your vm in case of full snapshot is available the snapshot that you will take will be the incremental one like this now we will restore these snapshots for this we will go to vm instances we will click on create instance we will name Rohit demo VM snap recovery because we are going to create this machine with the recovery of a snapshot and uh, in boot image you need to click on change and you have option of snapshot once you click on drop down you will see the option of snapshot of this three a snapshot of machine and incremental snapshot of instance so we will go with the full snapshot it will create 10 GB persistent disk for the boot and we'll click on select also once you go to management and disk disk uh, you can add a additional disk from here and it also gives you option whether you want to use the snapshot of existing disk and when you click here you will get the option of Rohit demo VM disk 3. If you select this option, it automatically pick the size of 600 GBs because this particular snapshot is of disk which is of 600 GBs. If you set done, it will create a disk with the snapshot at the VM creation. In case you don't want to do it now, after VM is created, you can just edit the properties and add a VM disk using this snapshot. So we will add this disk. Now we only and we will click on create. The machine is creating with the snapshot one. In meantime, machine is creating. Uh, let's go to any of the instance and see how you can add new disk using that snapshot instead of adding it at the time of VM creation. So we will just click on add it and in add it when you go down you have an option of add new disk when you click on add new disk it gives you the same option that you just saw at the time of vm creation blank disk image or snapshot and in a snapshot you will see the option of disk free snapshot you can select it and it and it will automatically pick the 600 gb as a size and you can confirm it you, you can confirm it and you can save it and this will result a new disk in this VM with the size of 600 GB using the snapshot of disk 3. So in this way you can create a disk on existing VM using this snapshot or you can create a disk using a snapshot during VM creation as well. The machine is created once you go to the machine 
you can see that we have not specified details but it has everything and now it has one 600 gb drives which is created through the snapshot Till now we have seen that how we can create the full snapshot, how we can take the incremental snapshots because we have not doing anything in incremental snapshot, GCP is automatically deciding whether it's going to take full or incremental and how we can restore VMs or disk using the snapshots. Now we have left with two things, deletion of a snapshot and schedule of a snapshot. For this we will go to the snapshot again. And in a snapshot schedule, we have option of create a snapshot schedule. You can also click option coming above the window, create snapshot schedule, schedule name. You can give any of the schedule name here and description as per your uh, requirements. We are not changing anything that it's going to take daily. Schedule start time is this, delete snapshot after 14 days. Deletion rule, deletion rule is uh, once you delete the disk, should it delete the snapshot associated with the disk? or a snapshot will retain till the time of retention. So we will say that keep snapshots. Enable VSS copy. Now we will click on create. Schedule is created. As of now, this schedule is not going to do anything. It's just a schedule. We have not attached any disk or VM along with this schedule so that the schedule can take the backup or a snapshot of those particular objects. For this, you need to go to the disk. And in disk, you can click any of the disk drive. Let's see, we will go with the disk 4. And in disk 4, once you click on edit, you will get the option of a snapshot schedule. It's saying no schedule. Once you click on it, you will get the option of schedule 1. That means once you click save, this particular disk 4 is now attached with the schedule 4. And when that schedule is done, it will automatically take the snapshot of disk 4. You can assign one particular schedule to multiple disks or instances for their backup. Let's see whether it's yes or not. Uh, let's go to some other, yeah, they, we will choose the boot disk for our backup. We'll click on edit and now schedule a snapshot and we are still getting the option of schedule 1. So that means one schedule can be shared by multiple disks in this way. Let's go back to snapshot again. So now we will see how we can delete the snapshot. For this, you just need to click on the snapshot. Let's clean all of them because we just created them for the demo session. And click on delete, delete three snapshots, deleting a snapshot. The snapshots are deleted. So friends, I hope uh, you have a better understanding now that how you can manage the snapshots in your Google Cloud Platform account. We have completed our today's lesson. Thanks for watching. For any questions, please leave comment on videos or contact us.